Marcus Nance, does the quality of your cables help with the sound of your system? Marcus, that's a little loaded question. If, if you look at it from strictly the science standpoint, there's three properties when you look at a piece of wire, and that's whether you're talking an RCA cable, whether you're talking a speaker cable, or whether you're talking a power delivery cable, you know, like your eight gauge, your four gauge, your one op, things like that. Uh, you've got resistance, you've got inductance, and you've got capacitance. And those are the three characteristics that you can actually scientifically measure and talk about to tell you why one wire may or may not give you better sound, better performance over another wire. Now, the two that can, and they can be effective, but they tend to be more of the uh, audiophile conversation words would be inductance and capacitance. And basically, if you look at that, inductance is any wire that's twisted around itself or wire that's twisted around itself, that can become an inductor and create inductance, so there's that. And then capacitance is, you know, cables running side by side and depending on the insulator and what it may or may not hold for a charge or what it does, it can create capacitance issues. So if you have a wire, that is giving you inductance, well, an inductor is a low-pass filter, and if you got a wire that's capacitance, uh, that is a high-pass filter. So if you get into the, the nitty-gritty of wire, can inductance and capacitance play an issue on the signal that you get to your speakers? Absolutely. So inductance and capacitance on your RCA cable, inductance and capacitance on your speaker wire can affect it. Now, is that a big issue? Not really. Uh, does it happen? Is it measurable? Yes. Are there some extreme cases of wire that do a, a poor job and give you too much capacitance or too much inductance? Yes, and I've seen testing on those type of wires that they can affect your signal. But if I have to be honest with you, the number one thing that you can do when it comes to wiring up your system is always use the right gauge wire to make sure that you're not getting any signal loss because that's the last of the three components we talked about is resistance. And for example, there's a, actually Ernie, since we're on this conversation, if you'll bring up the asset, it's in your folder, it's, it's chart number one, it's called speaker wire chart. Will you bring that one up for me just a second? I know it'll take you just a second to load it up, but go ahead. But this reads right into it, Marcus. So, you know, speaker wire, and you'll see more examples of this as we show the, what you lose in power wire, and we do the demo here in a little bit. But this is a chart that shows you what kind of loss you can see through a typical speaker wire and where you can draw the line. So this helps you make an educated decision. So for example, we'll just go down the chart here to 16 gauge speaker wire, because 16 gauge is a very popular size. And as you can see, into a four ohm speaker, with 11% loss, meaning at the end of that 27 feet of cable, you would lose 11% of your signal, i.e. voltage. And that's about a half a dB drop. Is that audible? Depends on how picky your ear is. Most people really can't hear anything until you get up to about two or two and a half dB. I would say that's probably the average person. Although I am one of those people, I can hear about a dB. And once you get into about a dB of loss, I can tell that this sounds different than that or quieter. I can tell one's louder than the other. And so this chart uh, gives you a great look at that. So if you're gonna run your speaker cable 27 feet, which in a car, I don't think you're ever gonna get up to 27 feet. But if you did, you would lose about 11% or a half a dB of output from the amplifier through that cable into your speaker. Now, if you didn't want to have any of that loss, obviously if you go up to 14 gauge wire, 14 gauge wire, you can run 43 feet before you get to that same loss. So in a car where you're typically running anywhere from maybe seven to 15 feet of wire, obviously 14 gauge wire, you're not gonna experience any loss problems in that. And then 12 gauge, obviously you can go 69 feet on that before you experience any type of loss. And even though it's 69 feet, it's kind of, I can tell you for me, I just always wire subwoofers up with 12 gauge wire. It's always overkill. Uh, you're not running your subwoofer wire 69 feet. I mean, subwoofer wire, you may be running that wire, uh, you know, anywhere from one to seven feet, depending, and if, even inside your cabinet, you don't have that much wire. So 12 gauge is always a safe bet for subwoofers, unless you're running a monster system, and those guys, you know, get into running, wanting to run eight gauge or four gauge, which even in those cases, I think you're getting into extreme overkill. But that chart, and uh, what we'll do, this was actually asked about on the previous show. I'll get with Bill, and we will post these graphs and charts that we're talking about tonight. We'll get those up on socials. So you guys can come back and look at those. Maybe we'll just post it up on uh, Facebook. You can check them out there. But that helps you decide. So when it comes to does, does wire, can it affect the quality of your system? Yes. It's capacitance, 
inductance and resistance, and the first one you should worry about, which is the most common one, is resistance. Worry about that first. I doubt you're going to run into any, uh, it's called LCR, if you want to know L uh, for inductance, C for capacitance, and R for resistance. You're going to run into very few LC problems. You're going to run into lots of R problems if you don't use the right size wire. And, and you can never use too big a wire. It's not like, hey, there's, here's the chart, and it says I'm good with 16. Am I going to cause any problems using 14? Not at all. Uh, you're always better off to use a wire that is the size you want or slightly bigger. Uh, it's when you go the other direction and go smaller that you're going to run into issues. So that's a great question. Thank you for putting that up on the screen, Jeremy. That was fantastic. Living Loud with Andy. The information on this show is awesome. People pay to go to school to learn this stuff. Much appreciated, Kip and the Kicker team. Andy, we're all a bunch of enthusiasts here, honestly, and we just like sharing this information. Sometimes we, you know, we interface in the outside world and we see a lot of misinformation or disinformation. And what we really want to do is here on the show when we, we have those topics, we're not trying to tell you you're wrong. We just want to show you where the misinformation or disinformation is and let you make your own decision. Uh, science is your friend, and that's why we try to base everything on here when we talk about things, especially these wire charts and things we talk about, you know, uh, somebody might say, I, I run 12 gauge wire to everything and it doesn't matter. I, I can hear a difference. Well, if you think you can hear a difference, I mean, it's not hurting anyone. If you want to run 12 gauge to everything, run 12 gauge to everything. But for people who are looking like, I'm looking to get the best bang for the buck, you know, what do I need to get so I get great performance? That chart I just showed you is a great place to go to help you determine your speaker wire length because uh, if you don't want any loss at all, you just step up the gauge. But if you're acceptable to half a dB loss, you know you're safe at 16. So it's a great chart to look at and we love sharing that information. Thanks, Andy. Uh, you are definitely a good guy to have in the feed. You know your stuff as well. Yeah.